Hey everybody, welcome to No Mormon Hell 2 live stream. You have me here and you have life here. If you don't know us already by this time, I'm TBSJ, community manager on No Mormon Hell 2. And life, would you care to give me an introduction? Hey everyone, great to have you here. Uh, yeah, my name is Life. I am the game director on No Mormon Hell 2 here at Tom Banner. So if you've been with us before, you know what's coming next. We're gonna tell you what you can expect with this live stream. We're gonna talk early access the next hot fix, the upcoming update, and then our roadmap and what may have changed and what we're bringing in based on your feedback. So for early access though, I'll hand it off to Life to talk about current early access. Yes. Um, before we dive in, before we dive into our agenda here, I really wanted to 
Yeah, ultimately, just send out an apology uh, for the launch that's behind all of us here. Um, you know, here at Tom Banner, we are a lot of us are gamers ourselves. You know, I do, I do sometimes wait for releases really passionately, looking forward to it, and um, yeah, I can really appreciate that. It's a bit frustrating to have it a bit of a disappointment and to get, um, especially have these technical uh, problems get in the way of the experience. I think in terms of the technical situation, especially with our servers on launch, our matchmaking on launch, that was really, um, that was just not good enough on, on our side, uh, to be to be frank. And we'll certainly make sure to do much better from, from here on out. And I think also fair to say have been uh, since. Um, I also think it's worth mentioning uh, to give a bit of a shout out here to the No Moment Health team at Tom Banner. Um, they've been really tremendous at making sure that we can react rapidly to the situation. Uh, since launch, of course, we did improve our server performance significantly. We've improved our matchmaking significantly. And we put out uh, two hotfixes that really helped to improve the situation um, and the game. And I think, yeah, also, of course, encouraging on our side to to see that you guys are seeing these improvements and are, say, appreciating these uh, these immediate steps after launch to get the game into a better state and to make it the game you guys want and, and of course, also deserve. With our uh, Hotfix last week, Hotfix 2, we also started to address some of the uh, balancing feedback you guys had, some of the more experiential feedback about the actual gameplay experience. And we wanted to make sure that we really rapidly jump on these as well. And that, that ties really into our first bullet point here about our the early access stance or our strategy to early access with you guys together. Um, because it is really important for us that we tape and develop this game together with all of you. And uh, to take your feedback on board and to um, yeah, collaborate on ultimately refining the game um, No More Hell 2. When we decided or, or talked about, okay, releasing this game in early access, I think one big part was, was that we felt like we were taking some, let's say, clear risks in the co-op space. The whole foundation of the game that you start alone and then you actually have to find your friends, find other players across the map, that felt really, uh, yeah, we were honestly worried or concerned that people would not like this as much. We were excited about this novel approach to co-op, but we felt like, okay, when people meet up to play with their friends, like. I mean, do, don't they want to play together and be together right from the start? And sort of the the social chaos and the emergence of of stories that unfolds got us really excited, but we were quite worried about that. And I think that's where, uh, despite the maybe a uh, bit of a rocky, more rocky launch than we wanted, uh, definitely what is exciting for us is that you guys seem to really get that part about the game, which we really see as one of the core pillars of the experience. Uh, the fact that you have a much more, yeah, emergent chaotic co-op space where it's not all players starting together, running through, but really meeting players at different times in different situations, sometimes unexpectedly, sometimes expectedly. Um, that That's something we see as a core part of the game and we're super thrilled and excited that you guys yeah, on board with this and uh, give, giving really positive feedback, sharing stories as well, which is really cool um, about what you experienced in this um, yeah, social sandbox, you could say. We sometimes talked about how one of the most important things for, for me certainly was to make a game where it, you as a player can connect with another player and you feel like you're making this one friend like you get stuck in the elevator in real life, right? And you speak to this person for a couple of hours and then you never see them again, but you have that fond memory of that experience. And that's what we wanted to create with, with No Woman Health too. Um, so any feedback on that, um, on that part, please keep it coming. As I was saying, we really want to make sure that we shape this game and, and develop this game um, together. And um, 
moving it in the right direction with your feedback on board. Um, okay. Yeah, and I think that that sort of uh, brings us a little bit to um, yeah the, the upcoming hotfix as well uh, coming out this week. Uh, hotfix number three. Um, we have a. Uh, I think this hotfix probably fair to say, Jay, that it will be a bit more of a technical focus again. That is what it looks like. So for those of you, we don't have patch notes out yet. We'll be getting those out before the hotfix releases. But yeah, looking at what is coming in with the fixes, it does look more technical. Hopefully to yeah, fix a few a, things that we're experiencing. Yeah, I think, uh, of course, one um, one favorite of everyone, I'm, I'm sure, is the, the floating heads. Uh, the, of course, it was on purpose in the spirit of Halloween. Uh, not really, but uh, that, that's going to finally get fixed in the upcoming hotfix. Uh, also, a thorn in our side on, on the balancing front is the, the exploit around the uh, perks, where you can essentially dupe um, infinite ammo. Uh, that's also going to get, get fixed with the, with the update. So that, um, that exploit and that strategy won't be working anymore. Which we'll look forward to hearing your feedback on future emergent strategies, ones that fix, because we know the ammo duping one is part of, I think, surviving nightmare even at this point. And we're very sorry, y'all. It's probably going to get a lot harder, but we want to yeah. hear that it was and how you experienced it. Harkens back to the old uh, Diablo 1 days of uh, <laughs> duping items. Um, one thing that we did. Um, intend to fix for Hotfix 3, but uh, we ultimately decided that uh, the risk is too great to roll it out in, in a small rapid Hotfix. So this will be coming with update one, is improvements to our melee tracers, or you could call it the hit detection um, system. There, there are a few improvements that the team is working on uh, or have been working on that will be coming with, with update one. And we're gonna talk more about that in a, in a minute, I'm sure. Yeah, because that's going to be a good one, actually, good point to start talking about update one and what people can expect. So first thing we should probably talk a little bit about, we did mention some posts about when update one will be coming in. Now, I believe we're not going to share the date just yet, y'all. Sorry, sorry, we got a lot of it to do before that. But we have confirmed it is this month in November, right? Yes, yeah. indeed, end of November. Yeah, so keep an eye out for that. And then... A lot of things are coming in update one that has been some feedback and requested for certain things. As you said, those hit detections are certainly something we're yep. working on. But I believe, would you like to speak to the balances? We've seen a few discussions around those. Uh, yes. In our community so, coming in. Yeah, we've, we've obviously heard your feedback around the, uh, let's say, difficulty balancing and um, heard the feedback around the zombie hit points which really, uh, let's say, got in the way of the game feel on higher difficulties, where it just became too much of a yeah, slog fest, a chore to actually fight through zombies. And the team have been has been doing some really cool improvements. We had uh, just a play test this morning that, that was really exciting, um, where we will be removing these kind of hit point bonuses from zombies on higher difficulties, and instead lean into other factors to make uh, the match much more harder on on higher difficulties, especially on the highest difficulty on, on nightmare difficulty. Um, I, I don't know how much we want to spoil here about it, but definitely <laughs> one exciting element, again, tying into your folks' feedback is um, comments around ammo scarcity, or uh, rather perhaps the current abundance of ammo in the game. And that will be addressed, addressed together with the difficulty uh, uh, balancing. Well, ultimately, on higher difficulties, you, you find less ammo. Um, mm -hmm. it makes the game much more harder. So I think that's that's going to be really exciting. It's not really a feature, right? That, that you would be like a um, put on the, the Steam post, but uh, it's going to make the game much, much better. Yeah, look forward to the patch notes and update notes about that one for more details on that for sure. Where yeah, it's not an exciting one in that regards, but I think everyone's going to find it exciting when you start playing and that yep. kind of comes into play, that feeling of being unable to catch that kind of stuff and finding yes, less and, and less and getting desperate to find exactly. items. Exactly. And I think 
it ties into another, um, let's say, category of feedback that we've been hearing from you guys. And that is really the, let's say, the vulnerability of player character of our responders. And um, I think one thing we are still excited about is keep telling the story of No More Women Help. And we have sure we've talked about this on a previous stream uh, that really the responders you play in No More Women Help 2 in our they had canon these are the characters the survivors from the first game um they've made it out they survive and they're now deciding to go back and help in these moments of, of deep crises they're the first responders and the location of, of big crises and um but at the same time you do understand that you want to see a greater degree of vulnerability which ties into of course, the balancing, something we just talked about. But we also realized that um, inadvertently and not really uh, on purpose, I suppose, we perhaps leaned a bit too much into, let's say, traditional hero fantasies with regards to the visual design of our responder outfits, um, sometimes also in the design of the, the their voices and their audio. It's definitely something we are looking at to ultimately create a wider range of, um, let's say, visual uh, stereotypes or tropes for you guys to to latch onto and get attached to. Uh, so it's something we are looking at. Uh, stay tuned for that for future updates. We definitely have more uh, visual clothing and, and, and cosmetics uh, that, that's going to come out soon with the future updates. But um, I'm sure we're going to talk more about that uh, in the future stream. Absolutely, there is going to be an update one stream for y'all to hear way more about this stuff in way detail, but you do want to give you kind of a, a peek ahead on what we're looking forward to with update one. And for that, we also have some stuff about characters. Exactly, and staying on the responder theme, uh, one uh, piece of feedback we've heard was with regards to the character choices you get. The responder choices when you when you lost your responder and you you're choosing a new one um which currently in the game is entirely random and uh, we've heard some some feedback that it didn't always feel great to um well if the random role essentially uh takes certain potential choices away from you so we are adding a few uh rules into the character generation to ensure that uh, there's always a variety of genders, a variety of uh, clothing as well. Uh, so you don't get situations where you essentially have um, three very similar characters with similar clothing to choose from. Um, that's it because the random role didn't quite uh, go, go away. As you know from our roadmap, and we might talk about it later, we also still have um, character customization on our roadmap. But uh, that will certainly have to wait a couple of updates. Um, it's not not coming up imminently. It is there. I'm looking so far to run through the zombie apocalypse in a shirt that matches this one. I'm hoping <laughs> so, at least. Well, it's a good idea one day, for sure. Yeah. Right? I think I could survive a zombie apocalypse in a normal woman health for sure. I... Yeah, we were just we were just talking about the uh, the responder backgrounds, right? And how you know, we wanted to make sure that um, with these backgrounds, you get 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 the, the the fantasy and the idea that these are normal people, right? That these are a, a sous chef or a former hockey player. And we, we talked about, well, yes, okay, there are also some military backgrounds in there because we felt like these are the kinds of people who probably have a higher survival chance than maybe background game developer um and then yeah <laughs> hey, challenging hey. me on that yeah you are i have the zombie survival guide i have so much information how to eat my way through a zombie apocalypse i have plans life okay i will survive yeah. a zombie apocalypse <laughs> i have learn, done my research. learn how to skin a rabbit and yeah <laughs> wait that's what it involves no <laughs> <laughs> I didn't um, sign up for that. Be, I didn't sign up for that. Come on now. Moving from that and the how to actually survive the apocalypse we have and how to survive our game and get through the power plant. 
and we have yes. it that you know there's a power plant and we've been looking and hearing about playing the power plant would you like to provide what we're looking at for yes. adjusting so um again we've heard your feedback that i think generally most of you are excited about the map overall the locations you can explore and the variety that the map provides early on but we certainly also heard the feedback about the repetition for the final part of the power plant which um we were really happy about how the sequence plays but we also understand that um yeah you you play that final sequence every time you you get that far and um that's why we prioritized uh, different uh, endings for the map uh, hearkening back to yeah, franchise um franchise classics right the notion that a map can end in multiple ways and um starting to build build on that fantasy with with our maps for normal hell 2 as well uh we do have a you could say an alternate ending uh, alternate ending sequence uh ready uh to be quite transparent and honest we are still investigating and evaluating if uh and how it holds up uh, from a quality point of view um we want to make sure that anything we put out there is not just uh let's say there for variety but actually a compelling experience um so we're still testing and investigating we have additional options as well in development but they will have to wait for future updates um but we are still uh aiming to get one additional variation of the ending of the power plant map out by update one for the end of november um but as i was saying it's still under investigation under evaluation so um stay tuned for for more news on that um so we be able to be more concrete uh really soon on that absolutely and of course should that come out we do want everyone here to tell us what you thought of that ending uh tell us if you got the variables and what you thought of it give us feedback we always ask for it support site discord please let us know we want to hear it we will reach all of it yeah because some go. of that some of the feedback um might not always be something we can action right away um can be multiple reasons can be because um production realities can be because we don't see it mm -hmm. fit for this particular map but it can always inform future maps um so yes. any feedback on any mechanics and um experiences always super valuable yeah before he checks in a point put the cm hat on for a minute to everybody and just let you know feedback like we do check in on that if you're thinking like i said something a week ago why hasn't anything happened we take it as life pointed out it might be production things it might fit better for something later on we do look into it in that kind of way and we absolutely discussed internally and reference it to anything else when it comes to player feedback along with the vision of the game and the vision of involving the players so every please, said, forum please. thread is being read yeah so yes. please get that stuff in get your stuff just do it as long as you're respectful mm, respect each other it's a zombie apocalypse now we can do that we need to yeah stick together with this yeah sure. <laughs> exactly um we depend yeah, on each a couple other more, but, yeah um a couple more um exciting content things to talk about for update one uh they are on the the roadmap as well two additional weapons are going to come out with update one um yeah the m1911 um handgun and uh the m7 gold rifle so it should be should be exciting um obviously always great to have more tools to loot to encounter a bit more variety as well and um yeah, certainly also important with the M1911 to um, get more one-handed firearms uh, into your guys' hands. So, should be exciting. Looking forward to those. And then we have something exciting to show for the next one, which we know it's been a top ask, and yep. we've talked about before, the HUD. Customizing the HUD. Let's roll tape. So this is gonna we can loop this as we talk about life, but do you want to talk about a little bit what's going on with the UX? 
Yes, I think we had already talked about uh, in our last live stream a little bit how we, yeah, we suddenly went into the launch worried that people might struggle to find their way. It was based on early feedback we had with internal um, uh, smaller group of community testers and, and other um, feedback groups. And that's why we went with the objective markers and other hot elements always being on. And uh, yeah, we certainly heard your feedback, how it is getting in the way of immersion, it's getting in the way of the overall experience. And that's why it was really important with, with update one to give you uh, that level of control over um, over your experience and be able to modify individual elements of the HUD. So it's not gonna be, um, so you have that fine level of control. So for example, deciding that uh, you want to always see player markers, but only see objective markers when you press D to bring up your compass. Or you might not want to see certain elements ever. Um, additionally, I will say, and that's to be clear, for not for update one, but a future update, uh, we will be starting to uh, tie some of these settings to the higher difficulty levels, uh, because we did hear feedback that um, some people were worried that, well, I can turn off my markers, but if I know that other people have their markers on all the time, it really affects my experience in a way as well in, in this multiplayer environment. So that will be coming yeah, with a future with a future update. Yeah. That way, when you're all in the same difficulty, you'll have to put up with the same. We all suffer together. I mean, I was going to be the one to say it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just want to comment for something. I know for some people, if you see it in our socials or in our posts, you might have seen this video already. We want to share it here as well for anyone that had not seen it. And of course, you would have seen it, but you didn't get to talk to life about it. Right? Come on. <laughs> but thank you for that uh, look ahead into update one, which again, for anybody that may have missed it, it is coming near the end of November. Keep an eye out for more details about that. Keep an eye out for all the information of what will be coming into that update. And we look forward to getting it in your hands along with the next hotfix. But now we're gonna look to the future, the exactly. roadmap. Yes. We already talked about the update, which is aiming for late this month, later. Yeah, this month, y'all. And yeah, we so there's a few a... things around though. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about here, but, but the, the current um, roadmap, I think we touched on a few things that are on the roadmap already that would be coming as part of update one. Uh, you would have noticed that a few things were not mentioned. Um, and we can we can dive into some of these points uh, right now. So the first Please, one, of course, so. yeah, uh, <laughs> the first one, of course, uh, the respawn uh, system. Um, we, again, before launch, uh, before early access, we really thought that this would be one of the greatest problems about the game mode, to be honest, uh, the fact that you cannot respawn. Uh, that's why we really prioritized work on a way for, you know, it's not a, it's not a, you know, you just magically respawn, but basically for a way for your team to bring you back with a new responder. Um, and that is, you know, we have a first stage implementation for it, but um, it's not finished. And based on all the feedback that you guys have been providing, we really feel like it's not the biggest and most important item for us to tackle. So that's why we paused it. It's not off. Um, not off the roadmap, it's not canceled by any means, but it would essentially be be parked um, on the right column uh, for potentially a future update. But we really feel like uh, other features and improvements are much higher on uh, the priority list. Of course, the overall technical situation that we talked about um, is still the forefront of uh, our work, but even other features like um, the different endings, for example, for the power plant map would be more important in our minds based on what you guys are, are telling us. So that's why this feature for now, for now parked. The 
the other exciting feature, of course, that we should address is infection. Um, that will not be coming with update one, but uh, it's definitely, let's say, uh, right in the right in the torpedo tube afterwards, uh, you could say, without saying anything specific. But uh, it's definitely a high priority for us to to get infection out. Um, we're aware that it's a big part of the franchise. It's gonna I think really create great synergy with the social chaos in the game mode. And it will certainly, perhaps the most important thing, really add to the dread and bleakness of the experience because you have that not just you know zombies attacking you and you have to fight through through this opposition, but you have potentially sometimes this um yeah lingering infection working against you uh like a ticking time bomb um so stay tuned for that we pretty clearly hinted uh towards it last time uh but to be super obvious uh with infection will also be the introduction of the k button um because these two things really go hand in hand it's a super iconic moment of every good zombie cinema experience and good zombie video game so um certainly for no moment health so um these two things really go hand in hand it's not listed separately on the roadmap but we really see it as of the same parcel absolutely oh. i know i'm actually looking forward to seeing how y'all play out with the infection in this game coming in it's we already see a bit of it of course with the way that a player can become a zombie upon failing in their mission, being teared apart by zombies. Looking forward to this next part myself. And then okay. we have the map as something that we've been discussing. The next map. Yes. So our, any hints. Yeah, our second map is now in active development. Um, it will not be coming uh, with update one this year. Unfortunately, to be clear, um, we are looking for uh, a release and an update early next year. Um, we will um, we will essentially to describe it um, the way we see it. Our first map, Power Plant, was really released as one big package, and uh, really has multiple areas all compounding into a large play space. Right. And with uh, our second map, we will be more doing a, a sequential rollout where we will essentially start releasing the map in uh, core components and then keep adding to the map over time with your feedback in mind. So you will have more say in how the map ultimately develops. But of course, when the map comes out uh, with an update early next year, it will have a full experience, of course, but we will add more variety. Uh, similarly, as we're doing now with the power plan for the ending, we'll add more variety for that second map over time. Um, I know that it was, I think I saw some comments asking for different kinds of environments. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think I want to spoil anything really about the map. I'm sure we're going to do probably stream about this more specifically with maybe um, Dan Elder, John, talking about it more specifically, but um, I think it's fair to say that we'll be looking more to a, uh, let's say, suburban environment. Uh, we've done now rural. Our plan we see as a rural map, you know, a lot of wilderness, industrial areas. And with our second map, we really wanted to uh, hit home a bit more, uh, basically show how the apocalypse affects families and communities so um as a little as a little teaser dash spoiler all that sounds really great looking forward to it and i know for y'all out there we actually will i've said this during the stream just in case you got some new people pop up yes we're going to be doing a, a stream about update one we'll absolutely have people to talk about it talk about all the stuff we're going in through and you can see that stuff so we're definitely going to talk about it then. Get your questions ready for that stream. 
we cannot really talk much more about update one here because we do want to do spoilers, but we we're going to have, I apologize for not mentioning this at the beginning of the stream. I am so sorry, y'all. We are going to be doing Q&A. We grabbed some of your questions from chat already and we'll be answering them uh, at this point. Do you feel ready, Life, to answer these? Yeah, no, I, I think I'm I think I'm ready. Depends on the question, but... Uh... <laughs> We'll start with then one that I've seen in the chat. I've seen a few places. Adjustments to sprint. Will adjustments Ooh. to sprint be made for early access? Yes. Um, yeah, so this is a really, really interesting one um, because I think we wanted to make sure that we, we capture the fantasy of the Romero zombies in a sense that in these films, it always feels like uh, the protagonist can run away from the zombies until they no longer can. Like they're, they're never a problem to run away from and until you run into a locked door, until you run into a cul-de-sac, until you suddenly turn the corner and there's a, a whole horde of them. And that's where it felt too um, restrictive to really take away from your ability to continuously sprint. but We've heard your folks' feedback, and we're currently looking into um, adding essentially a stamina component to Sprint. It's uh, it's in development. You know, it's very it's early for it. We're definitely investigating. We're definitely thinking about it on, on the game design and gameplay side, and we'll have more concrete news for you later on. Until then, of course, you know, keep the feedback coming about it uh, based on the current state of the game. Um, but definitely, yeah, open to, to investigate that. What about, so my apologies, this is a previous question from another stream that people got in afterwards, which by the way, you'll can give us questions later and we can bring them up on later streams or different asks and answers. So number to hell two, because it's kind of a sequel during which season started. And then with Norman Hell 1, will it influence the zombie clothing? Like, if it started during summer, and then still it's during the fall, will many zombies be wearing light clothes? I, It's potentially some of this question too. Will seasons be influencing how we see the zombies? Can we talk about that a little bit? Um, I think we could talk about it in a sense that we... And again, I think, I believe we talked about this, how we want to make sure that all future major maps that are released, so Power Plant and our second map, uh, that they keep telling the story and evolve the events of No More Room in Hell. And with that comes, of course, a, a, a time component. So the, you know, the years go on or the seasons go on. So we definitely talked about exploring more, let's say bespoke um, weather variations and environments in the future. Um, I think with map two, it's fair to say we are still in this um, autumnal uh, environment, but um, definitely something we are absolutely open to to investigate and, and look into for the future and sort of on our on our radar essentially that um, there's some exciting vistas you could think about in in winter and um, of course in in the hot summer as well. So um, yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Nice. I know I am. We had this one from before as well. And then we're going to get to some of your modern ones again. Put them in chat. Get them going. Let's see them in there. Our corpses. So for everyone else here too. The corpses on the map. Not the zombies on the map. Because they're all technically corpses too. Are they fixed on the map? Or would they spawn different? And are they lootable? Ragdolled? Or static? So... Um, one thing that we really wanted to achieve was that there isn't a clear distinction between a corpse and a zombie. Like, uh, we wanted to make sure that you see, let's say, something that looks like a dead body on the floor, and you're not sure, will this body get up and try to kill me, or if it's just going to be there, um, to, well, uh, for you to safely pass. Um, I think as, as such, we would always lean into that fantasy where there isn't a clear distinction between, oh, that's just a corpse, quote unquote, 
and always make sure that we rather build in more surprises. I think our sarcophagus, uh, coffins, um, not quite a sarcophagus, uh, our coffins are, are quite cool, you know, where you uh, get that slightly delayed, um, let's say, activation of the zombie bursting out uh, after you walk past. Um, and build more of these fantasies instead of having a clear distinction of, okay, this is a corpse um, uh, that's just there for you to, to look at. Um, we did talk about um, lootable corpses before, but it's currently currently not planned. I think we want to more tap into the, the fantasy of yeah, finding loot in the world and interacting with the environment, opening shelves, opening lockers, opening boxes. Also, honestly, I don't know that I want to reach down and potentially loot a body and have it grab me suddenly. Um, there's many, many jump scares I'm okay with in this case, but I think that might be one that I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know, like, my little heart could handle getting face to face with a zombie and have it suddenly just, like, grab me in that instant death kind of moment. Please, no. Please. Uh, that's just my opinion. We have the will. Oh! We have about attachments. Attachments has been a common thread in a lot of ways for weapon things. We have a great thread about it. Can we expect finding guns with different attachments like flashlights, lasers, or scopes in the future? Is that a um, yeah, I mean the I think the answer to that is is yes. So we we have the weapon attachments on our uh, roadmap. Um, it's one of the features that we are really excited about because I think. Or we think it would add a lot to the game to have these um, lootable, to have um, it may be part of your progression as well. Um, and it provides that variety where, where sometimes finding that um, a two-handed rifle with uh, a flashlight attached to it is just such a game changer in, in our game where um, that would be super exciting or will be super exciting to add. But it's also very far um, out still. So uh, definitely something to um, yeah keep, let's say, send us over your thoughts and what you would love to see around that space. Uh, but you will need a little bit more patience until it's actually finding its way in the game. Uh, but it's certainly part on you know, the core direction of the Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now we have some more recent questions here. I know some of those were just from today when we announced the stream, but now we have some from in chat, so I can give you your names. Verdiak, if I pronounce that incorrectly, please let me know. But we have, will there be a linear objective game mode? Or potentially, I know we have if not, but could be that, will there be more linear maps? Hmm. Are these some things that are planned? Or we want to hear feedback? Or what would you, well, what would you say it, to it that? It ties a little bit into my opening point that I, I do think one of the most exciting parts about the game, even as it is right now, is the relative openness of the map, where um, you you take a route a diff each time you play, ideally, and we want to build on that. Like right now, we do realize that there isn't enough reasons always to take a different route, and that's that's what we want to improve. But we don't currently want to, um, let's say, think about taking away these choices from you and getting more into linear, confined experiences. It's really that, yeah, that element of the sandbox where you can go different paths, you can meet people at different rates, at different places, uh, that we see very much part of the core experience and that we're really excited about. And we want to build on mm -hmm. that instead of, let's say, steering away from it um it doesn't mean that there would be that there aren't opportunities for um arts in our maps that would play more like that uh, i think that could be really exciting where you have a very open area followed by a more linear path or the other way around um and it doesn't mean that we wouldn't explore this as a as a separate um game mode, but it, it would be a bit further out. I think right now we really want to focus on building the core identity of the game and we see this open game mode um, as part as a core piece of that. Uh, you probably couldn't all pick that up, but I'm just saying like, I like the maps. 
I like different styles. I like when you play in those kind of things. Uh, I'm having a great fun with things. We have a question about now. I'm going to apologize to y'all and life on this too. This might be a better question to answer in a support situation or things like that. But it's about controller support. Hmm. You think you can speak to that, or do you want me to check in with our QA and come back to it later? Question uh, is, I mean, when can we expect controller support to be fixed? Um, it's certainly, again, on our radar. Um, it's certainly something where we wouldn't consider the game to be finished, i.e. You know, out of early access uh, without controller support as it stands currently. But I, I can't really give a um, yeah a, a good timeline on this. Yet. Again, very early. That sense. Thank you. Well, very good. Uh, character customization. What will this entail in regards to how expensive it will be? From skill tone, I'm guessing, sorry, Verdiak, again, uh, from skill, I'm guessing skin, if I'm incorrect, please let me know in chat, but to clothing, or is it strictly clothing? So, I think, to be honest, that's something where uh, we would certainly be, be really interested to hear your feedback. Uh, I would say that, as it stands right now, we wanted to make sure that we give our uh, responders a real identity and, um, for example, avoid, you know, templating where you always play the same character. And I think that's where the, the skill system inspired by roguelikes really came in from a mechanical point of view. And we do have the same approach still to the cosmetic side as well, where you would, um, pick a character that would come with their basic, let's say, um, yeah, visual make up uh, who they are, and then you can go in and change uh, their clothing based on your favorite pieces uh, and whatnot. And then really it's about the degree of change that uh, we want to build into that. Um, but yeah, that was the current direction to really make sure that when you pick um, Janeway, the sous chef, uh, that, that in this case, she would be coming with a clear, let's say, identity of who she is uh, with her background background but also her uh, visual identity yes sounds good thank you so much for that answer uh, actually we did answer this one in chat so if you don't mind i'll take it again for gusti we have what's the best place for game feedback discord or steam well, i'm sorry to do this i'm going to take this one here anywhere you post that feedback is good I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Anywhere you want to post that, we'll check on all that stuff. We read the same discussions. We'll find it. We check the Discord. Yeah, we will find it where you post it. So I I would prefer you in the Discord because I like having the people who talks there. But if you're comfortable posting on Steam, post on Steam. It's all good, y'all. Thanks for checking in, though. Uh, we have about, will there be more extractions added? Also from Verdiac. My goodness. We check getting those all in. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's uh, they're really uh, asking the difficult question, the, about the important <laughs> ones. Um, yeah, I think that's, um, again, something where, uh, to, be, to be honest, that we've uh, discussed a lot internally, uh, where I think um, we would want to calibrate um, your guys' feedback on this as well and the priority of it. But certainly, we are seeing... I think it might have been part of the... Was it part of the blog post, that element? But we are definitely seeing a want from you guys to have a bit more control over your experience where um, the current game mode certainly... Um, I would say there's a, there's a group dynamics are at play, right? Where you feel like the urge to keep up with your group or to catch up with your group, um, or to lead your group uh, quickly and rapidly through the map. And I think that's where um, separate ways to extract, and I'm interpreting the question that way, uh, would really <laughs> okay. tie into that. Either being able to extract um, earlier, or be able to stay in the map and extract later. So it's definitely something that we are aware of that you guys are talking about it. 
and we'll be yeah listening carefully and um and take that into account for our roadmap for sure excellent thank you for asking those uh we have one about the countering speed running so we talked a bit about stamina and the sprinting in that as it is and just can check in with crew fire do you want a further explanation on the countering speed running in the game because of infinite running stamina or is it okay that there is plans of dealing with infinite running stamina would you like to hold and see what happens there and repeat your question later but life is that the only way we're going to carry on earth we're looking at other ways no i think um and again i always appreciate the feedback there but i i'm I, I actually believe that the the speed running that we are seeing is not necessarily just because of the stamina, and I think that that that's one element of it. But it it really is the overall difficulty, and it's something we've definitely heard feedback that the game is, um, especially with more experience, definitely becoming too easy. And that's where really with update one, um, I think you can be excited about. The changes we're making there because it is um overall going to be much more difficult and i think that that will mean that you will have to be more careful and if you play the game as you do right now you'll definitely have a much harder time uh, one thing we did not talk about earlier is the uh, lethality of the zombies where you have to be way more careful not to get um attacked left and right so i think that difficulty will help a lot to make sure people have to be more careful. Um, on that note, uh, a small fix that's coming in soon as well as the uh, uh, the bunny hopping uh, exploit will be fixed soon as well. It all is part of that, that package, I would say. Yep. So when that comes in, again, check in, play the game, hop in, but don't hop around and let us know I, I how will... it goes. I will, I will say one more point about speedrunning. Um, I think two additional things come to mind here where uh, I totally appreciate that you guys are saying I want more control over my own experience. And I think that's ultimately fair and that, that trumps everything. Uh, I will say as well, though, that um, we certainly got inspired by the No More Run Hub 1 speedrunning, let's say, maybe communities but style of play and uh the fact that uh with that comes the mastery of the map and knowing a route and being able to really learn how you can optimize your path across the map i think that is that is a part of the game uh that we want to let's say encourage it's part of the mastery of of learning to play this game better and better um so i will say that there's a certain a certain degree of intention behind the nature of speedrunning, but totally understood that it gets in the way, not everyone wants to do that. I mean, it gets in the way of certain players' experience and we want to make sure we address it. Uh, for the next ones, and everyone, I apologize for jumping back and forth to topics, but like I said, we grab the questions as they go and then we get to them. We've got two here that I apologize to the two askers. I'm going to link them together since we did discuss them a bit more in an earlier question about maps and the like. So Lone, Out Lone Outlaw and Kazipos. Uh, Shar, we're linking your two together, but they are about maps, environments, and making. So one is from Lone Outlaw. Will there be maps representing cities around the world? Or sticking in Pennsylvania's. And then have you ever thought of dynamic weather in the maps, night or day variants. So since they're both map questions, figured we could try and uh, get them in together. Thanks, y'all. So we've definitely talked about um, different kind of weather situations, uh, different kinds of moods that come with it. Um, certainly excites us for future maps uh, for sure, and we'll definitely look for these kind of opportunities. Um, definitely for future maps. Um, with environments, so as I was saying, I think a big part for us is to uh, make sure every of these major maps is keep keeps evolving the story of No More Woman Hell. And as players play these multiple maps, it's like it feels a bit like you're, you're joining the train ride that takes you from chapter to chapter um, 
through the story. And with that comes a certain um, continuity in the location as well. We're currently in Pennsylvania and we're definitely with future maps already moving in a certain direction and we'll be taking it further and further with future maps. And how far we take it, uh, we definitely talked about maps outside of America. We would definitely I would say bound to that specific territory. Uh, but it depends a little bit on, on how many how many maps we're ultimately going to make and how far we're going to take it in. I'm going to give people a quick warning on some questions. We've gotten a lot here in life. We actually have answered a lot overall, I think, for that. But we are being cognizant of the time. It is 4 p.m. Eastern, things like that. And people would have to get back to their work days. We're going to take a few more, though. Uh, we're going to try and then close out around four-ish, if that's cool with you all. We are going to keep the other questions, though. If your question has not been answered, we are going to keep it in our list. So please still get your questions into the chat. We're still going to collect them. But we have one here. Actually, we have three here. Nope, pardon. Two, you've already answered one. From, oh gosh, it's Moonstone. Um, You know who mm -hmm. you are. I'm going to try and get your name right. Sabinian Moonstone. I hope I got it right. Please let me know if I did or didn't. Feel free to correct me. And we have two questions. Will there be more music and environmental effects added to the game to enhance the atmosphere, such as emergency broadcasts, police radio chatter, the wind blowing, and similar? And the second one, or another part of that is, are there any considerations to individually name the ammo types instead of having pistol ammo, heavy ammo, light ammo, etc.? So first, let's go audio. Are mm -hmm. we looking for more music and environmental effects to add to the game to enhance that atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly... We're super excited how the audio scape overall, the music, the sound effects, the zombie voices, um, or the, the voices anymore, sounds, um, were received by you guys. Utterances the, from this. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, so uh, definitely really positive overall and definitely something we want to uh, keep building on. Um, I think especially on, uh, on audio side, there's great opportunities for a few more, let's say, jump scares where you hear sounds. And you know, I'm sure you, a lot of you would have found a, a couple of really cool, let's say, Easter eggs or environmental pieces like the screaming, the screaming in the tunnels by the um, uh, by the water filtration, for example, you know, really cool. Um, and yeah, no, definitely. I, mean, cool. I think I scary. Yeah, no, I think it's an absolute <laughs> uh, core piece of the portrayal of that active apocalypse that's still happening around you where the world feels as alive as we can portray and i think the sound effects are a big major part of that um the other question about the uh the ammo types uh of course we are aware of the uh the feedback from you guys there um definitely something we are we are looking into uh for the future uh, we're still investigating if it can be maybe an option because I still think that for for people less experienced with with weapons it can be maybe a bit challenging to really understand what's what goes in what uh, but also appreciate the immersion factor that comes with it for sure so um, it's definitely uh, it's definitely on our let's say in the active development bracket mm -hmm. and I did see a question here that I'm sorry I'm gonna get a little little sweet little heart thing going in here for I know who asked this question I've seen them so excited to ask and I can't resist making this our last question dual wielding <laughs> or if we're not asking this question and getting an answer for this I'm giving this the the feedback suggestion will there be dual wielding at all in this game I know you can already hold a flashlight and a one-hand weapon will we ever be able to switch that flashlight up for something or is it just a consideration um I would say so i will say that we to be honest we don't have dual wielding currently in our plans um of course we did talk about different types of tools i think there are some really cool ideas we've talked about cool ideas that you guys talked about about um yeah instead of the flashlight using a different tool to maybe change the world or, or have an impact on on the world uh so that's definitely something we'll be um 
keep thinking about. Do you hear it, folks? Feedback. Yeah, no current plans. Thank you for the answers. And life, thank you. Oh, uh, how you guys sift through the feedback? I don't want to tell too much about it, but we do read everything because telling too much about it would get me very technical and I am a data nerd. We do not want to get me started on that soapbox. But to end this all off, we are going to say again my usual about the get in our discords, get on our Steam, send it through on our support site. And I do read, life reads it. We have so many people reading it and going through it and making sure it bubbles up and we talk about it. So please get it there. Um, if it does feel like it's flooding or it's tough, that's so many people are giving us feedback. We do ask for respect of everybody's opinions in that regards. You know, you're all, you're all responders, you're all survivors, you're all here working together to cooperate, to survive the zombie apocalypse and live to see another day. So please, please treat each other with that respect. Thank you, Life, for being here. Again, I think I mentioned that once before, but I cannot say it enough. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with me and the community oh, about all of this. Yeah, you can, again, for everyone out there, find us on the Discord. You can see us at the NMRIH Discord. The invite has been in the chat. You can sign up to our newsletter at nmrih2.com and get updates as we send them out regularly on there can go to our steam you can follow us on facebook and twitter slash x we want to hear from you you can wish list us on steam or an epic or pick up the game it is out now of course but you know wish lists are still a good thing to do if you cannot get it right this minute we understand but please pick it up play get in here we want to see you there we want to see you in our spaces take care of each other yo uh Reminder, and we, yes, there will be a VOD of this live stream that will be available, uh, putting out as soon as we have it ready to go, hopefully later today, if not tomorrow at the latest for everyone. We'll update you with the hotfix details when there is, and look forward to talking update one, Pride with Life, and a few others. You'll probably all can guess who it's going to be here. Got to have John to talk environments, right? We all love him. Take care, y'all. Have a great Thanks day all. and survive. See you later. Bye-bye.